if you're someone who frequently watching my videos then you know i am going through a major renovation actually it's not a renovation renovation per se but uh there are like uh, kind of a, i'm repainting my house and things are everywhere so we discussed in uh, that in one of our previous video so my studio is like fully occupied as storage room and so i can do a full blown tech video but i have something to you today this is how it worked and if you remember uh, we talking about taking other new intern batch so for this one everyone who passed the first interview we called them for a workshop and we ran a nice program called mindscape i'll do a separate video about the mindscapes the uh, during the mindscape there was a tons of question came because they had to do a little system design and they are some questions this is a live video recorded when i answer this question i understand that this is, this video's intention is not to publish to youtube so i may not give attention to you and you may like kind of missing bit and pieces because you don't have a real context but this is a answer for one of a question they ask enjoy the video and i'll come back soon with the, our regular videos understand how the google api works then you can come up with your own solution for example sometime we need to design a solution very rural area we don't have a proper internet now don't tell now we have a stalling right so we need rural area so i i had to uh, design a solution where i can send only 156 bytes right so they don't even have a uh, 3g they don't even have a h it's a gpi okay so they are for learn how thing work for example i i i go to the solution so you want to track the bus location right so you have the bus and you have a person who's interested about the location the idea is one bus but can be hundreds of people expecting this location okay but the nature is no matter how many people interested the location won't change so what easier you can do is don't go up these fancy google api you whatever right you can as someone told get the uh, longitude and the that so get get you get the position of the bus right position of the bus and you can push this to a your api gateway to the web socket right so why some of you proposed the web socket but you didn't know why is web socket web socket is a protocol is the same as it's a http gateway there is nothing nothing special called web socket how it works is when you first make the call let's say this is the this is the back end right this is the uh, client so when you make the first call to the http back end from web socket it it sends a something called upgrade header it says i want to upgrade the client says i want to upgrade and also in the header you are sending upgrade to what upgrade to web socket so if the server support the web socket it says ah, okay i'm ready to upgrade so then same http traffic transfer to web server let's say there are two people right to talk to the phone right only one person technically can talk while other people is hearing but this system support both to talk on the same time it doesn't stop while you talking i also can talk correct Understand? I also can talk, but whether I can hear what you're saying is is different story. But if you see the device that policeman on the the traffic police holding, they have to push a button, talk, and remove the button. Then they can listen. It's a one-way communication. It's like half duplex. I can talk, you listen. Then when I you talk, I listen. It's a walkie-talkie. 
the HTTP work like that. HTTP work like you make a request, you get the response. Okay? I make a request, I get the response. So let's say you are the server, I'm the backend, I'm, I'm the front end, you're the backend, I'm the front end. I can make a call to you because I know your IP address. But you never can make a call to me because I, you don't know my IP address. Because I'm a client. Right? If I'm using a web or something, you cannot talk to me. That's the biggest problem with HTTP. Right? How HTTP works, if I talk to you, I send the request. What, you, what is your one? Response. If you talk to me, that is a request, what I am saying is a response. So there is no dedicated person who initiates the person is a requester who receives the request in the server. But the web server does is it makes a tunnel in between these two, that means the static connection, both can communicate at the same time. You don't have to make a connection. Connection is already established. Right? So now what it does is there is a web server gateway, you connect the bus is connected. And in time interval, it publishes location. Right? It publishes location. So now, you all try to use the Kafka, right? But almost everyone understands the Kafka wrong. Kafka is a not the thing what you think of as. Right? The people who are getting selected, when you come here, you need to go deep dive on the Kafka. So what, now what you can do is, there is a Kafka topic, right? This Kafka, Kafka topic, you probably this bus is like you can analyze the so some there's a consumer, so this web socket, receive the web socket and analyze all the like if you want to do the validation whether this is in the because sometimes bus may be broadcast in the location but bus is not started the uh, route, bus is stopped at the bus station. The driver is starting for something, but you shouldn't take that uh, traffic, right? You should have validation with the route whether this bus is on the move, bus is starting the journey or not. So you have that, you have to think like that. That validation has to be there. So now this service do is whether this is an in route, valid route, and everything. And if so, it publishes a message to Kafka, right? It publishes a message to Kafka. So now there can be multiple entities interesting on that. One is the users. So one consumer is listening to this Kafka and sending the messages, notifications, the broadcast message, right? To all these, these are also connected to the web socket. Let's say other gateway. These are connected to the web socket. It produces a web socket message to this channel. So whoever in this channel get the notification. Now you can use your Google app app or something on your phone to pinpoint that. Okay? You can pinpoint. So now there can be other entities who are interested about location. Right? So one is this. So probably there can be a checkers who's just the uh, initiated so the bus is going like some some sort of a people who just taking whether they have issues with the control or something. They also may give the notification about the when the bus is move or not. Right? There can be auditors. Right? If the bus is stopped for a long time on a particular station particular place when the, uh, where the bus is in route, they can detect as a potential accident or something. Right? They also can interest. See, you publish one notification, one information to the Kafka, and then multiple interested consumers, auditors, and potential, there can be a service running to analyze the location and the potential accidents or something like that. If it's in the traffic, you can say it's accident. Potential access before anything happens, you can proactively uh, for that. So you can come up with many other ideas. Let's say we implement the system. Year later, right? Year later, so your buses and uh, trains schedule is going to be in line. When the train comes here, bus has to go here or something like that, right? When there's an integration need to happen, it's just a matter of you adding other consumer to the same message. You don't change this side. Bus is always sending the notification. You change this side. Right? So the other one, there's a one seat available. <coughs> Many people try to get this seat. Okay? Only one seat available. Many people try to get this seat. How this works is like this. Right? How this works is like this. So this type of thing 
we are for example in in, in Pandey, we are handling like two three million this type of requests per day on the past doing this request uh, different type of request so how does that work there is a that can be your Kafka queue right so when you book the seat it arrived to this queue okay it's arrived to this queue so now there is an app so this app is connected to web super gateway right so now you make a call to the api gateway to the books seat now that it will go to the queue okay it will go to the queue so now there can be a hundred users requesting this seat all of them are going to the queue I publish a message. There are few processors this side. Few process service. Few process service. Okay? And then what this service does is it takes one by one message and process. Right? It takes one by one message and process. Now this API gateway service published the message to Q, right? Now it has to disconnect. That's the question I asked. Do you have wait? No. Once it's published to the queue, it go back to the app saying request is pending, pending processing or something like that. Still chain. Right? So this is called, so there are status code, right? 201, 202, 203. Right? This is accepted. I accepted the message, the message goes to the queue, now it's called pending state. Now when the queue process the process, let's say M1, M2, M3, three people try the same seat. I get M1, 1. It type your bus, let's say M0. M0 is a different bus. That seat is booked. Now, can you process take the M1? Seat is still available. I process it. Process it. When the processing is done, I send the message to the web server gateway from the queue processor saying this seat is confirmed now. So now, web server sending. This app for the web page is not waiting. It's sending a notification back to the user saying your seat is confirmed. Right? So now M2 is coming. When the M2 is coming, seat is gone. Now cannot allocate the seat. It sends a message saying your request is cancelled or a problem or something like that. Right? So that is how you can protect your database. Now what happens is only few processes are accessing the database. No matter thousand people trying the same seat, only Q service is accessing the database. Now you will ask, okay, but how about the read? Right, thousand people need to see the uh, the database the, the available seat. Right, so that is what most of you missed. You need to understand this type of patterns. Right? For example, bus is where the bus is, no matter how many people interested, bus place won't change. So what you need to do is you can use a redis or something and cache it. You don't send the traffic to database directly. You take a copy of the data and store in the cache. Right? So how does that work? See this one. Right? This is the database, this is the cache, this is your service. User request comes asking where this bus is. Right? So now you first take the cache. First time it is not available. So now what it does? This is the one. It go to the database, fetch the record and put to the cache. And return to the user. Now second user comes asking the same bus. Now what happened? <laughs> available on the cache. Now you don't know go to the database. All other users within next minute won't go to the database. Okay? So when you put to the cache, you can put something for TT, a time building. Cache has three policies, eviction, building, and maintain. Right? So when you do this, evict it, after one minute, someone asking the bus, is it available? No. It go to the database and take it back. So all the solutions you had to take, dashboards, 
That's how you should manage it. When the first user load the dashboard, you need to cache the data. All the rest of the users will serve by the cache. So now you will see, okay, database won't load, but the cache will load. But it's okay, why? Why it is okay? Hmm? Caches are in memory. Most caches are in memory. So you don't get the IOPS. You don't get the IOPS. IOPS meaning uh, the hard drive reads, that's right? Okay. Right. Any question related to the solution? How to add this type of feature or something? You guys are very wrong about the load balancing. Load balancing is not what you think it is. How the load balancing works is there are separate load balancers. Kubernetes or something cannot do the load balancing. The load balancing this side you have a target group, targets, different different targets, right? When the request goes here, based on the availability, sometimes it goes round robin. Right? Sometimes you have algorithm 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's how request goes. First one here, second one here, third one here, fourth one here, fifth one here. Okay? Like that. Sometimes you can configure, we are saying each server can take 20 requests. Then what it does? This build up to 20. When it's hit the 20, it goes to the next one. Right? That way you can save this without executing when, when this service has a space. Right? That type of thing is load balancing. Now the problem is when the first request goes here, right? Let's say you are getting a result, first page goes here, second, second, second one is going to this side, this server. Now it doesn't know about the first one. Right? For that, you can use it a sticky session, which is a very old thing to do. Sticky one. You can stick it. When you come something, you can stick to a particular server. It's a bad idea. The right way is you can use the again a release or something and you put it this release and give a key id to this user so when the second page comes it comes with that key so when you go to the release it can figure it out what is the first page doesn't matter which, uh, which service is served that's how we usually do it any other thing we have a few more minutes any other questions related to this or not that's fine we can ask any questions 